A mom who kicked her kids out when they turned 18 is now trying to move in with them because she has no money. Her daughter posted to Reddit explaining that her mom refused to work when they were younger. And when her parents divorced, the mom remarried almost immediately and relied on her new, much older husband who died last year and left her with almost nothing. After the second husband passed away, the mom moved in with her son and his wife. She was supposed to watch their kids, but the mom failed to watch the kids and caused problems in the son's marriage, so the son kicked her out. And now, the mom wants to move in with this daughter, saying she will watch her two-year-old grandchild. This daughter added that she and her brother were both kicked out of home at 18, right after they finished high school, because as their mom said, adult children should never live with their parents. When this daughter told her mom she wouldn't be allowing her to stay, she says her mom had a meltdown, saying she had nowhere to go and making accusations of providing for her daughter and son in times of need. It's time for this mom to take care of herself. As they say, what goes around comes around. A divorced mom is refusing to go back to her maiden name after her ex-husband's new fiance complains she doesn't want to share a last name with her. She's being called unreasonable for being unwilling to change because she doesn't want to have a different last name than her children. She says her divorce from her ex was amicable and they've always maintained a friendly co-parenting relationship. But that all changed when he got engaged to his girlfriend of five years who has very different ideas of how things should go now that her ring is on her finger. The new fiance doesn't want to share a last name with the ex-wife because she's intimidated by her. So the ex-husband told her she has one one year to change back to her maiden name. And she's understandably bristling at being bossed around, especially given that her kids don't really like the new fiance and it was written in their divorce papers that her name would be her choice. When the mom tried to underline how absurd this all is by suggesting the kids also take her maiden name, he predictably lost it, saying that they're his kids and they should have his name. Nothing like a good old fashioned sexist double standard. If the wife to be can't even handle sharing a name with another woman, is she even ready to be married in the first place, let alone to a guy who has kids? A man refused to give up his plane seat so that a mom and her baby could sit near the dad. The man posted to Reddit explaining that he and his wife were on a 10 hour flight from Europe to Asia. They had booked their tickets well in advance and paid for front row seats for the extra leg room. This mom came up to the man and asked him to switch seats with her husband who was sitting on the second row so that the dad could come up and help with the baby. The man declined and was quite firm in his decision even refusing to move after a flight attendant asked him to switch seats. The woman who had asked this man to move was fuming and make matters Worse, her baby got fussy and started crying. A while later, the flight attendant came back and offered the man and his wife two different front row seats, so they did eventually move, but the mom of the baby was still bitter, and he could hear her making comments to her husband from behind for some time. The man later told his in-laws about the situation, and they said he should have moved the first time, which made this man question if he was wrong for standing his ground. Flight attendants are certainly allowed to ask passengers if they will move, but they cannot force a passenger to move if they've already paid for a specific seat. A millennial boss says that from now on, she will not be hiring any more boomers. Sarah Holcomb took to TikTok to share her experience with onboarding a new boomer employee, who turned out to be both unqualified and, in her words, too old to work. When the 65-year-old woman began her job, Holcomb explained that the business is closed on Fridays. But sure enough, when Friday rolled around, the new employee emailed Holcomb to ask how to log in. So Holcomb called the employee and discovered that she only has a landline. A cell phone had been clearly stated to be a requirement of the job due to the technical requirements of the position. And Holcomb Holcomb quickly discovered that the boomer woman had lied about other qualifications too. But unsurprisingly, many commenters found her take really inappropriate and ageist. Boomers compose 19%, nearly a fifth of the workforce. A proportion that's likely to remain significant in part because there's so many boomers, but also because our economy barely allows anyone to retire anymore. An AARP study found that two thirds of workers over the age of 45 had experienced age discrimination in the workplace. So it's probably best to evaluate each employee on an individual basis and leave their age out of it. A mom picked her son up early from a sleepover because the other family has a bath day. The mom posted to Reddit saying that her eight-year-old son Jason had a sleepover at his best friend Brandon's house but changed his mind while he was there. Jason called his mom and asked to be picked up early because apparently Brandon's family has bath days. And since it wasn't a bath day, they wouldn't let Jason take a shower. After hanging up with Jason, this mom called Brandon's mother, who's named Ashley, to talk to her about it. She informed Ashley that Jason needed a shower, but Ashley said that because Jason was in her home, he needed to follow her rules. But when the mom got there, Ashley reprimanded her, saying that she needed to teach her son to follow other people's rules. Commenters on Reddit pointed out the obvious 
obvious that a child doesn't need to stay anywhere they're uncomfortable for any reason and that children are allowed to change their minds about something. Parents that show empathy for their children's needs while fostering open and judgment-free communication help their kids learn to navigate tricky social situations with both respect and confidence while keeping them safe. <laughs> A teacher was called into the principal's office after refusing to give her personal address to a student's parents. The teacher posted to Reddit sharing that she has one boundary that she's created to separate work from home, and that's never sharing her personal address. These parents wanted to send the teacher a graduation announcement, which the teacher says she welcomed because she thinks their kid is amazing. She told them to just send it to the school and she would get it, but the parents pushed back, saying it felt like she was calling them a stalker or some kind of danger. They continued to request her information and the teacher continued to politely declined, but the parents were still upset and called a meeting with the principal and this teacher. When the principal found out what was going on, they backed the teacher up and told the parents that she wasn't mandated to give out personal information to anyone. Sure, these parents probably weren't a risk, but this information in the wrong hands could put the teacher at risk, as every day teachers enter schools and classrooms that are undoubtedly unsafe. This teacher also deserves to keep her home separate from her work. It's a boundary that's incredibly important for her health, well-being, and safety. A teacher gave cupcakes to the whole class, except the birthday girl, despite the birthday girl's mom sending them in. Felicia Monique told the story on TikTok and asked how you would feel as this girl's parent. Felicia Monique's sister-in-law had sent cupcakes to school to celebrate her seven-year-old daughter's birthday, and the teacher decided to withhold a cupcake from the birthday girl as a punishment because she had allegedly acted up beforehand. The little girl came home in tears, saying that her teacher hates her because she wasn't given a cupcake like the rest of her class. The little girl, likely excited because it was her birthday, had had a hard time staying on task and following directions. Felicia Monique argued that this teacher's punishment went too far and failed to give the little girl any sort of valuable life lesson in the end. While teachers have the right to educate their students about appropriate behaviors and discipline, they should never use food or humiliation as a form of punishment. It's far more effective for teachers to treat students with the same respect that they expect from their class. They are bound to make mistakes and even when they do, if it's their birthday, let them eat cake. A 14-year-old demanded that her parents let her change her embarrassing name so that people would stop making fun of her. Not gonna bury the lead here, her name is Candy. In her deleted post, she detailed the weird looks that people would give her when she told them her name and the innuendos the boys would make about her future profession as an adult dancer. She just wants to change her name to Candace so she can have an actual name and her parents can still call her Candy if they want. She's printed and filled out the legal name change form. She gave it to her parents and told them they can submit it now or she'll do it the second she turns 18. But her her parents are not on board, telling her she'll get over it in time. They never wanted her to have a boring name, which is why they went with Candy in the first place. According to Northwestern professor Michelle Karoulis, the first thing parents need to do when faced with a child who hates their name is try to understand why. Parents can then work with their children and try to find a suitable nickname and test it out if they aren't quite ready to legally change their child's name. While it's fine for parents to want to give their child a unique name, it's also within their child's rights to want to change it. Have you ever wanted to change your name? A teenager asked on Reddit if she was wrong for not wanting to share her birthday with her twin. The 17-year-old shared that her twin died when she was younger and that she'd like to have the day to herself and not share it with the memory of her brother anymore. Every year on her birthday, it was a tradition to blow out candles that were for both her and her brother. And this girl has wondered since she was eight years old why they kept celebrating her brother when he was no longer there. When she turned 16, she was in the hospital and her grandfather wished her a happy birthday, just her. She realized how meaningful it was for someone to just acknowledge her with no mention of her twin's birthday. She felt guilty and tried to have a conversation about it with her parents, but they just pushed the topic to the side. As her 17th birthday came around, she asked her grandfather to only put 17 candles on the cake. Her parents called her selfish and self-centered for wanting a day that celebrated only her, and she's been living with her grandfather ever since. Although it may be hard for these parents to move on in life after losing their son, they still need to be present and have a relationship with their existing child. 
A Walmart location announced a no-quit program that says employees have to meet with management before resigning. The retail sector is still gripped by a major labor shortage, and one Walmart store seems to have made an effort to stem that flow with this new no-quit program, which a worker on Reddit found posted in the Walmart location they work at. As one Reddit commenter put it, what are they going to do, call my parents? It's a meeting with management to discuss why you're quitting so that they can try to convince you to stay. Policies like this are totally voluntary and not enforceable. So-called at-will employment laws on the books in every state but Montana empower Power employers to fire workers for any reason so long as it's not illegal, like discrimination. But those laws also stipulate that employees don't have to give any reason whatsoever for quitting, and they certainly don't have to meet with their managers to talk about it. Many people online pointed out that these meetings are often scammy ways for employers to begin the process of firing you, you know, to help with that really bad turnover rate, and to document reasons to deny any unemployment claims you might make in the process. So if you want to quit, definitely do it in writing, but just quit. You don't owe Walmart or any other employer an explanation. A woman recorded a Panera drive through employee refusing to take her order because her toddler was screaming. The employee refused service and the woman refused to leave, continuously pressing the employee as to why he wouldn't take her order. When the woman asked if he refused service because the child was screaming, the employee responded saying yes and that it was his right to do so. He then offered the woman alternatives to placing her order at the drive through like coming into the restaurant or placing her order online. The woman then threatened the employee saying that she was recording their interaction and that she was emailing corporate because he was being completely rude. The woman was completely dissatisfied and told the worker it was his job to take orders and she also captioned her video, what child doesn't make noise? Apparently it's difficult for drive through workers to hear when there's that much background noise. And establishments are allowed to refuse service to disruptive or unruly customers, including children. However, this employee ultimately didn't refuse service. He simply provided the woman with other options to place her order, which she turned down. Who do you think was right in this situation? A working mom looking for a nanny says she's willing to pay, get this, three to four dollars an hour. The job post was brought to the attention of a career nanny named Kara. The mom of four who needs this nanny works from home and she needs someone to watch her infant while her older kids are at school and her husband is at work. Since she works from home, she's willing to pay someone three to four dollars an hour to entertain her almost four month old. But from the way this mom worded her post, it sounds like this infant doesn't want to be put down or left alone, so this would be a pretty intensive childcare job. The mom concludes her post with, funnest and easiest job ever, I swear. Kara pointed out the obvious major issue with this mom's inquiry, and that's that three to four dollars an hour is half of the federal minimum wage. The reality is that nannies provide an essential form of caregiving, and there's a dissonance when parents want the best quality care for their children, but don't want to pay for it. The level of care nannies offer, which is individualized to each family, deserves high compensation. And all work deserves fair compensation, no matter what, not three to four dollars an hour. A worker purposefully tanked a job interview when they lowballed him on salary. It teaches interviewers a lesson about fair pay. Act your wage has become a buzz phrase on social media to describe simply putting in the level of effort into your job that's commensurate with what they're paying you. And in a Reddit post, this worker described how he introduced his interviewers to this concept after he'd already been transparent about his salary requirements, telling them in his initial phone interview that he would agree to the position for a certain salary. So when he then got a call for an in-person interview, he assumed they were amenable to his salary expectations, right? Right? Nope. They offered him the job on the spot, but was told that given his experience level, they would only offer it to him for the low end of the salary range. So he told them that sounds great. He'd just put in X dollars worth of effort instead of the amount they'd already agreed upon. The interviewers initially thought he was joking. He assured them he was serious and that if they were going to pay him on the low end of the salary, he'd be a fool to do the high end of the work. It may be standard practice to toy with candidates like that, but that doesn't mean it should be. Pay people what they're worth. It's really that simple. An aging mom admitted that her daughter is her retirement plan, saying that her generation had kids so they could take care of them when they got older. A 28-year-old woman named Jo said that her mom expects to be supported financially as she ages, despite their tenuous family dynamics. Jo and her mom were having a regular phone call when her mom opened up about how she'd always dreamed of having her children take care of her. The mom went on to say that things are so expensive and they sacrificed everything for their kids. So these parents assumed their kids would essentially pay for them when they retired. Jo's mom 
confirmed that Joe herself is the retirement plan. The mindset that kids should be their parents' retirement plan is problematic in emotional and practical terms. These adult kids are struggling to make ends meet in our current economy. Student loans, inflation, all of these things are making it difficult just to get by, let alone support another adult or two. Parents are required to provide for their children. They did decide to bring them into the world after all. Yet having that same care extended to them later in life is never a guarantee. A man applied to 100 jobs with a resume full of nonsense and got 29 interviews. Job search consultant Jerry Lee decided to conduct an experiment. He created a resume that at first glance looks nice and neat and full of sterling credentials. But look a little closer and the resume is patently absurd, starting with the name that I can't even say on this app. Skills on the resume include arson, and his achievements include raising the average coffee break time at Amazon Dating, a thing that does not even exist, by 300%, by crying nonstop in the office area so people would want to run away way to the break room. Lee's success rate just goes to show how little attention recruiters are actually paying to our resumes. And this, along with other experiments that Lee has done, show that recruiters pay the most attention to the top section, the companies you've worked at, and the job titles you've had. The rest, they clearly aren't paying attention to. And it also confirms what we already know about the way privilege affects the job search. A degree from Stanford and a job history composed almost entirely of the five most powerful tech companies in the world will push you to the front of the line every time, no matter what your resume actually says. A dad had a day of fun with his kids while his wife was away, and his wife labeled him an irresponsible father because of it. The dad explained in his since-deleted Reddit post that his stay-at-home wife had to leave town to tend to her sick mother, so he took two days off of work to care for their two children. They share an 11-year-old boy and a 13-year-old girl. The man said that his wife usually makes really healthy food for the kids, so he figured one cheat day wouldn't hurt them. Bacon and eggs and waffles and curry and hamburgers and french fries and ice cream were all on the menu that day, and almost all homemade. They even watched a Spider-Man movie, which they rarely do because the mom doesn't enjoy them. When the mom got back, the kids told her everything. The mom expressed her disappointment in her husband. She called him a lost cause at parenting and said she shouldn't have left the kids with him. Commenters mostly supported the man, but cautioned against the kids seeing him as the fun parent and the mom as the strict parent. Parents need to be on the same page and there needs to be room for balance. <laughs> A teenager told his mom that life would be better without her, so she granted his wish. The mom posted to Reddit explaining that her 14-year-old son had started acting out at home and at school. She tried to figure out what was happening, but he denied any bullying and he told her that 14-year-olds should act out a little. The mom told her son that this behavior was not allowed in her house, which included swearing at his parents, swearing at his teacher, and much more. The two went back and forth for a while when the son blurted out, my life would be better if I didn't have a mother. The comment hurt but she decided to grant him his wish. She prepared dinner for herself and her husband, but told her son that he could make himself something from the freezer. She didn't make him breakfast the next morning and informed him that he would have to find his own way to school via the bus. Soon enough, this woman's mother-in-law called, accusing her of being a horrible mother and called her petty for the punishment. Anyone with a teenager can tell you, disciplining teens can be particularly challenging. Natural consequences are highly effective in teaching life lessons, and this mom was able to teach her son that actions have consequences. A mom took her adult son apartment hunting and she quickly realized there was no way he could afford to live on his own. The mom, named Jess, explained in an appearance on the Drew Barrymore show that she was astonished at how unrealistically expensive rent prices have become. Her son had just graduated from college, was employed, and had moved home for a couple of months to save up enough money to get his own place. Seems reasonable enough, right? But when they went out to actually find a place, sticker shock hit. Even studio apartments were extremely out of his budget. It isn't just Jess's son that's struggling either. Her oldest daughter called up saying that her husband was going to have to quit his job to take care of the kids because childcare was so expensive that they were spending more on it than he was earning. Jess's conclusion? We can't say that millennials are just lazy because they're working their butt off. And according to the Zumper National Rent Report, one-bedroom apartments average $1,526 a month. It's disheartening that many young adults are now finding themselves stuck in this endless cycle of financial insecurity. <laughs> 
If your boss asked you to cancel your vacation so your coworker could take her kids to Disney World, what would you say? For a woman named Evie on TikTok, it was a flat out nope. Evie, who's child free, had already gotten her vacation approved months in advance and was really looking forward to being home with her friends and family for Christmas. But then her coworker, Karen, the jokes write themselves, decided that she too wanted to take off time for Christmas. So their boss, Bob, asked Evie to find it in her heart to cancel her vacation so Karen could take her kids to Disney World. Evie, understandably, was having none of it. So her boss retaliated by making Evie the one to tell Karen her Disney World vacation was canceled. A 2022 study from Resume Lab found 74% of respondents thought people with kids were treated better in the workplace, and 85% reported working in places where people with kids had priority when it came to time off and vacations. Just because someone has kids doesn't mean they're entitled to someone else's benefits. That's taking things way too far. Child-free people have lives too, after all, and they shouldn't be expected to make sacrifices just because they made different choices in life. A boss accused an employee of not being a team player because he was unable to start his workday an hour early. TikToker Unwed Vampire, who lives in the UK, posted a video about a recent spat between him and his new micromanaging American boss. In this case, Unwed Vampire was unable to run a client meeting at 8 a.m. because he has a morning class before work at that time. But rather than be understanding, his new American boss went full U.S. work culture and suddenly threatened to fire him and then reported him to HR. American workers who've all been through this a million times gave him the usual advice to document everything so that there's a paper trail and then report the manager to HR. The British HR rep laughed the whole thing off and was basically like, silly American, just ignore him. Because work culture like this pretty much doesn't fly anywhere but the US. And it shouldn't fly here either. Studies have shown that American work culture's unreasonable demands actually makes workers less productive. Bottom line, work is a means to an end and nobody owes their boss any extra favors. The sooner American managers realize this like the rest of the world has, the better off we'll all be. Dad refused to pay for his daughter's English degree, but he funded both of his sons' as medical school. He sat his daughter Jane down and told her that if she went through with her English degree, he wouldn't support her at all. Jane is 21 and getting a late start on schooling. She'd just been accepted to her dream college to pursue a degree in English. Her dad had paid for her to rest and travel for a year, and now her parents had offered to pay for her entire education on one condition. She had to get a degree that was, quote, worth it. The two sons thought their dad was being too harsh on Jane and that he should pay for her schooling. The dad Dad feels like this is Jane's way of rebelling. He wants her to do something useful that she can live off of. And boy, did the English majors of Reddit deliver. They shared in the comments their stories of fulfilling careers and changing lives. The arts are frequently undervalued, underfunded, and overlooked, but that doesn't make them worthless. The truth is, any degree can turn into a thriving career. Who do you think was wrong in this situation, the dad or the daughter? A man was recruited for a job he'd already been rejected from twice, so he booked an interview anyway just to see what would happen. He explained that when the recruiter reached out to him about a defense contractor DevOps job, the job description looked strangely familiar. And after doing some research in his emails, he realized he had applied twice and interviewed once for the same position. Sure enough, the company did not notice that it was the same person they'd already rejected twice. But this time, the VP of technology was on the call, and he was really interested in this candidate. Before the interview ended, the VP asked the requisite, do you have any questions for us. And the candidate couldn't help but ask, do you realize this is the third time I've interviewed for this position? He said the VP was not happy and everyone else's faces were priceless. But this story is a perfect reason the job search process is now such a nightmare. After waves of layoffs, HR and recruiting staffs have in many cases been reduced to skeleton crews that simply cannot keep up with the volume of recruiting work. And simply replacing them with AI tools isn't working. Turns out firing everyone except a handful of astonishingly overworked people doesn't really work very well. A new mom refused to tell her family which of her two babies was adopted because she feared they would treat the babies differently. The mom posted to Reddit where she explained that she gave birth to a baby girl about two months ago. At the same time, she adopted another baby girl who was born about three days before. The story goes that her best friend fell pregnant around the same time she did, but that this friend was not in a place financially or emotionally to have a child. This friend wanted her child to have a good life somewhere else, so this woman stepped in and said she would adopt the baby and raise the girls as twins. 
twins. Grandma got mad, rolled her eyes, and asked which one was her real daughter. And this woman's parents backed grandma up, saying that she should tell them which one was adopted. This woman was shocked as she viewed both babies as her daughters. She kicked her family out and told them that unless they apologized and stopped asking which baby was adopted, they wouldn't be seeing either of them. The consensus among commenters on the post was that this mother's family would treat the two daughters differently if they knew which one was adopted. Adopted children are real children. Full stop. A teacher spent a whole 10 minutes on a fun classroom activity and a parent demanded an apology. As a reward for great test scores, this teacher had asked her class to spend a little bit of time coming up with a name for her new puppy. The teacher posted to Reddit where she shared that her class had worked hard and gotten their test score average up by 25 points. So during the next class period, the students spent 10 minutes coming up with and voting on a name for the new puppy. They settled on the name Steve Austin, the German Shepherd. One parent emailed saying that it was inappropriate and irrelevant to the math class and called it a waste of time demanding an apology. It left this teacher wondering if she'd done something inappropriate. Brain breaks are essential during the school day to keep students happy, motivated, and productive, no matter their age. After naming the pup, the teacher felt as though her class was in better spirits and they bonded over naming the dog together. According to the American Psychological Association, students who have positive and supportive relationships with their teachers attain higher levels of achievement than students with more conflict in the classroom. If motivating students via lighthearted bribery with a cute puppy is wrong, I don't want to be right. A mom wants to sell her daughter's Taylor Swift tickets to pay off $9,000 in student loan debt, but the daughter says it's non-negotiable. The mom asked for advice from financial content creator Rachel Cruz, explaining that her daughter just graduated from college with some student loan debt. The daughter had also obtained some Taylor Swift tickets during pre-sale and was planning to go with her mom and her sister. She got them for $209 each, and they were pretty good seats. However, when her mom saw the insane resale prices for these tickets, it got the mom thinking that maybe it'd be better for her daughter in the long run if she sold them. She could then use that money to knock down some of her student loan debt, but her daughter described going to the heiress tour as a bucket list item, and denying ourselves joyful memories just because we're stuck in a negative financial cycle doesn't make our lives any better. Ultimately, it was revealed that the mom's money was used to buy these tickets, and Cruz's co-host pressed the mom on an important question. Would she spend $9,000 to pay down her daughter's loan if they hadn't bought the tickets in the first place? The mom said no, they'd be relying on profit from the tickets, and the mom re-evaluated the situation immediately and said she would be taking her daughters to that concert. A woman who bought two seats on a plane because of her weight was asked to squeeze into one so that a toddler could sit next to her. The woman posted her story on Reddit describing herself as obese. She said that it sucks to have to pay for an extra seat, but it is what it is. On the day of her trip, everything went smoothly at first. A woman came up to a row with a boy who appeared to be about a year old and told this woman to squeeze into one seat so her son could sit in the other. This woman told the mom no and that she had paid for the extra seat. The mom then went and told the flight attendant that this woman was stealing her son's seat and this woman had to show her boarding passes to prove that she had paid for the extra seat. The flight attendant initially sided with the mom asking this woman to try to squeeze in but the woman stood up for herself saying she wanted the seats that she had paid for. The flight attendant eventually told this mom to put her son in her lap. If the mom wanted an extra seat for her son, she could have purchased one. We all deserve to be treated with respect no matter how we present in the world or what our bodies look like. <laughs> A boss told her employee that she has a complete lack of respect for protocol because she couldn't take her first class seat. The employee took to Reddit to explain that her and her manager were flying back home after attending a conference. She is a frequent flyer and had been booked on the same flight home as her manager despite being seated separately. The employee had accumulated enough points on their personal credit card to be upgraded to first class, so she decided to take it while her boss remained in their seat and coach. When they deboarded the plane and got to baggage claim, her boss confronted her about switching seats. The boss then accosted her, saying that she has a complete lack of respect for protocol for upgrading to first class. The boss then went on to explain that because the company bought the plane tickets and because they are higher up on the hierarchy, that they should have been given the upgrade and not the employee, despite it being her own personal travel point. This boss was weaponizing their position in the workplace, which is a huge red flag. It has also proven to be detrimental, stopping employees from giving new ideas and limiting healthy conversation. For this woman, a simple upgrade caused a big fuss with her manager, and it is entirely unprofessional for a manager to use their status to try to take away benefits that an employee personally earned. 
stay-at-home mom can't understand why any parent would do school drop-off and pick-up when their kids could just take the bus. The mom has since deleted her TikTok, but not before others could stitch and duet it. In it, she asked, parents who do pick-up and drop-off every single day, I have a genuine question for you. Genuinely, why? She couldn't fathom why anyone wouldn't take the bus, which is essentially free transportation and requires much less effort on the part of the parents. Apparently, this mom's six-year-old wanted to stop taking the bus and wanted their mom to do drop-off and pick-up instead, which would make the child feel special, but the mom genuinely can't understand why she would make this change. Another mom, The Life of C, stitched this video and said it all comes down to one thing for her. She says she does the carpool line every day to spend time with her kid and because she likes her kid. An educator named Laura also responded to the video saying that she's seen some things and that bad behaviors can happen on buses because it's not a manageable environment which can lead to unsafe and even predatory behavior. Did you take the bus to school? What was your experience? A language arts teacher is considering quitting her job because her 10th grade students don't know how to read. The New Jersey-based teacher shared in her Reddit post that the last couple of years have been very stressful, but the straw that broke the camel's back was realizing that her 10th grade students couldn't read at grade level. In fact, they could barely read at all. Parents are mad that their kids are failing, but there's not much she can do, especially when it comes to student behavior, because students are rude, always on their phones, and destructive. She believes the issue is students lacking the desire to learn and a system and country that doesn't believe believe in education. The country with the global reputation for having the best education model is Finland. They don't teach to test. Teachers are given carte blanche to actually teach. Not only that, there's no homework, the school day is shorter, and there are more breaks during the day. We're to a point where the entire education system in the U.S. needs to be revamped in order for teachers and students to succeed. It may seem like options are limited, but parents can get involved. Vote in school board elections, get involved in state government, and join the PTA. Do whatever you can to advocate for your kids and support your teachers. A new boss fired a high-performing co-worker without realizing that they now owe him $200,000. The employee posted to Reddit saying that he had worked at a fairly large company for 25 years. He had extensive corporate knowledge, was very well paid and well tenured. But that all came crashing down when a new boss was hired. This new boss had a habit of firing people that he didn't like and replacing them with people that he knew. This employee knew that he wasn't in the boss's inner circle, so he saw the writing on the wall and decided to look for a new job. The employee got an offer from one of the many jobs that he applied to while anticipating his termination. So when his boss eventually told him there were letting him go, it didn't matter. What the new boss didn't know is that since the company decided his role wasn't needed anymore, they needed to pay him a redundancy fee. The boss agreed to paying the redundancy that was outlined in the employee's contract without actually knowing the amount. And the boss's face went pale when he realized it was $200,000. This incident highlights the impact that bad bosses have on corporate culture. In many other instances, employees are often fired or let go without second thought and left scrambling for other jobs. It's a vicious cycle and without the proper protections in place, it is one of the many ways the United States devalues labor. <laughs> A mom emailed her daughter's teacher saying that she was done with homework and that her kid needed to be a kid. Bunmi Leidatan shared a screenshot of the email on Facebook. The letter said that her daughter Maya would be drastically reducing the amount of homework she does because of stress and that both a tutor and a therapist suggested that they lighten Maya's workload. Two to three hours of homework at night leaves her daughter very little time to just be a child. Leidatan's top priority for her daughter to make sure she is happy and healthy. Studies have shown that excessive homework has a negative impact impact on kids. The National Education Association recommends that homework time should increase by 10 minutes each year with a standard of 10 minutes of homework time per grade level. Unfortunately, one study found elementary students receiving three times as much homework as recommended by the NEA. A study found that students who spend too much time doing homework can experience academic stress, physical health problems, and a lack of balance in their lives. Over half of students blamed homework as their primary stressor at school. What are your thoughts on homework? Did Maya's mom do the right thing? Gen Z is splurging on a hot new item, and it's actually really depressing. Forget fancy cars, nice vacations, designer handbags. According to Business Insider, younger generations are splurging on luxury groceries. Food writer Michael Hayes, for example, angrily called an attempt to gaslight younger generations into feeling shameful for buying food. And of course, the article made no effort to place Gen Z's grocery spending habits in the context of runaway housing costs, rising inflation, insurmountable student debt loads, a messy job market, which has left many young people feeling like one of Hayes' 
racist commenters who said, I can't afford a European summer trip, but I can get the better reusable olive oil. All groceries, let alone healthy ones, have skyrocketed in cost since 2020. Splurging is a very weird way to say being forced to spend more on every morsel of food you buy, including, as Hayes pointed out, the McDonald's dollar menu, which is now more like the $5 menu. Can you really blame them for splurging on things like organic vegetables? It might be the only luxuries they ever get. A high school teacher stressed how frustrated she felt with the learned helplessness of her students. She explained in her Reddit post that she teaches mostly high school students, and one of her students, a junior, would rather sit in his seat and do nothing than do the work assigned to him. On this occasion, he wasn't doing his work because he didn't have a pencil. So she gave him one, and he continued to stare off into space, saying the pencil was broken, but really, it just needed to be sharpened. During another incident, the principal announced to the school that the internet wasn't working, but that didn't stop her entire class from complaining that their computer computers weren't working even though they all heard the announcement. Other educators have admitted that their students lack the basic foundational skills they need to progress. According to Edutopia, the best way for teachers to handle this learned helplessness is to understand that students may be struggling and deserve more attention. But teachers are already struggling to help students more with the limited resources provided to them. How do we, as a society and as parents, address the root causes and help students succeed? <laughs> A group of co-workers hilariously retaliated when their boss posted a rule forbidding them from discussing pay. Pay transparency has become a hot-button issue in recent years because, of course, it violates long-held mores that say that talking about money is crass. It gives employees leverage over employers and can potentially reveal unfair or discriminatory practices. He posted a notice by the time clock threatening the entire staff if they talked about their pay. The manager, named Jer, went on to explain that going forward, discussing wages was strictly forbidden and grounds for dismissal because, he said, wages are proprietary information. But unfortunately for Jer, at least one employee at Planet Fitness knows their rights, and that forbidding staff from discussing pay is illegal on the federal level. And that employee gathered the rest of the staff together to post a hilarious response to Jer, in Comic Sans font no less, informing Jer Bear, as they called him, that it would behoove him to familiarize himself with the federal employment laws relevant to his job. Anyway, for the record, lawyers say that if this happens to you, you should immediately report your boss and then hire a lawyer. Sorry about it, Jer Bear. <laughs> 